<laughs> hey Neil, you playing Wind Walker too? Yes. Well, all right. Um, um, I read the talents, covenants, tier sets, rotations, and stuff. So I think I got this. Um, how how was it? A tiger palm into a rising sun into a spinning quicker. Holy ticking nut sack of terror! Spin. Oh, dude! What the man? There has to be more to Windwalker than just... Spin Crank Kick. Spin Crank Kick. But before we go into the talents, consider becoming our patrons if you like the content that we do and you want to support it in a more, let's say, meaningful way. Although we do appreciate pretty much every support that we have on our channel. And if you do decide to become a patron, you can check the link down below in the description that will take you to our Patreon page where you will see a couple of tiers and each tier basically has a couple of rewards uh, associated with it. You can have stuff like wallpapers personalized for your character done. And you can also be a part of our, you know, monthly Patreon talks, join the Discord, be involved in the creative process and all that kind of good stuff. So if you do like our content, you know, the guys that we do, the tier lists, the alpha coverage, the podcasts and the streams as well, consider becoming our Patreon, support us and we will be super grateful. Thank you very much. Let's actually check the talents. Your wind walking adventures will start with Chi Burst as the best talent for more than one target. It is your piercing Hadouken that will damage any enemy it passes, granting you up to two Chi and will also heal your allies. Just be wary where you throw your Chi Burst as it has a 40 yard range and you might end up pulling unwanted packs. For single target fights, it will come to personal preference but usually eye of the tiger will be the pick this will give your tiger palm the ability to apply a dot that will damage your enemy and heal you over time on the second row now all options are viable but usually you will want tiger's loss for all situations with it you will have your personal freedom that can be shared with your allies as well making red an even more of a no-no to the party on top of removing all roots and snares it will also increase the target movement speed by quite a lot if the extra button is too much for you then any of the other two passive options will do the trick on the level 30 row fist of the white tiger will be very good all around pick this will add one more chi generator to your toolkit that will deal massive damage on a fairly short cooldown in AoE and in dungeons you can swap to Ascension. It will increase your maximum Chi energy and energy regeneration and is a passive so you know you don't have to worry about it in dungeons when you will prefer to use those GCDs to generate spinning crane kick stacks. Next up if you don't need extra utility go with good karma in raid. With it your touch of karma will also heal you for a lot of the damage that it deals. This will be a perfect excuse to stay in that fire to heal yourself when you are low and deal damage at the same time. In dungeons, you can swap to Ring of Peace. This is good if you want to move the mobs a little because in raids, the tank is too busy keeping the boss in one place, so it will not be as useful there as it would be in dungeons. Because now you can summon your Ring of Peace, which bounces mobs away from its core, perfect for all scenarios presented before, and you will also interrupt them. Unbelievable, this is the best utility. On your defensive row, again, all options are viable, but you will have to take into consideration the type of damage you take. So for heavy magic damage, you will want diffuse magic. Yes, it's in the name, but not only does it reduce the magic damage you take, it will also try to reflect all active magic effects back to the caster. For physical damage intake, dampen harm is ideal. It is on a longer cooldown, but it reduces all damage received by an amount depending on how big the hit will be, potentially reducing more damage taken. You'll also be protected a little longer, so you'll have to decide which one suits your needs better. On the next row, for pure single target fights, hit combo will take the cake. This will improve your mastery even more, giving you a stacking damage buff whenever you trigger your mastery combo strikes. If you don't fuck up, this buff will last the entire fight, so try not to spam that Tiger Palm or Blackout Kick like our Lego here. For any fights with more than one target, Dance of Chi still holds the medal for the best talent. 
Sorry, Russian Jade Wins, you have to remain a brewmaster and Mistweaver only option. Anyway, your cheese spenders have a chance to make your spinning crane kick deal enormous amounts of damage even after the small nerfs it suffered. On the last talent row, Whirling Dragon Punch will still be the go-to in all situations. It will make you deal a lot of damage to every target around you, but only if you have both Fist of Fury and Rising Sun Kick on cooldown. The other options have found some plays in dungeons, but usually they are behind the Dragon's Punch. The best way to find out what stats you need will be to sim. There is no way around it, sorry. If you want to have a better understanding on how to sim though, just check out our simming video and you cannot go wrong, but you know, after you finish watching this video, cause algorithms and shit. As a rough representation, if you cannot be bothered with simming, you will still want all the agility you can get, so you will equip that higher item level item. Next, you will want versatility to punch harder, followed very close by mastery and critical strike, for the same reasons, obviously. With haste actually being all the way to the bottom of the list. The weapon enchants will depend on whether you will use a two-handed weapon or dual wield weapons, but still you will want the sinful revelation enchant for single target fights with a two-hander or on one of the two weapons and swap the celestial guidance in AoE or on the other weapon if dual wielding. On your chest, the eternal stats enchant will be the best all-around pick, synergizing very well with touch of death and speaking of the synergy, use the heavy desolate armor kit for more stamina and damage and synergy. On your cloak for high level content go with fortified avoidance, it is really good when constant AoE damage occurs and you know swap to the soul vitality in any other situation again for more stamina and more damage. Don't forget to enchant those boots with eternal agility enchant for more damage. In your gem slots and ring enchants you will have to sim to see what is best for you and again if you cannot be bothered with simming then just use versatile jewel clusters for your socket and the tenet of versatility enchant for your ring. The one and only flask for the whole expansion will be flask of power as it is the only one that will increase your dps because of the extra main stats it provides. For a little higher burst use the spectral potion of agility and you won't regret it. On your weapons again you can also use the shaded sharpening stone or the shaded weight stones depending on the weapon type to deal extra damage. As for the food you can eat the feast of gladness hedonism which will do the trick thanks to the extra agility it provides or like for the gems and rings you must sim what food you want if you want to min max, but if you don't want to do that, you will never go wrong with stay color mode. When it comes to your covenant, not much has changed from before. The Necrolords still hold the spot for the best all around covenant. The covenant specific ability Bone Does Brew will make you a god in AoE and is decent in single target fights as well. It will throw a keg to your enemies making all your abilities have a big chance to hit again for a good amount of shadow damage. On top of that, your spinning crane kick will cost only one chi but you still have to have at least two chi to use it so you know try to generate it before using the brew. The signature ability will be Fleshcraft providing you with a shield with various buffs depending on what soulbind you pick. And that soulbind should be Princess Emony, the lovely lady. With her 3 potency conduit path she will bring some interesting traits to the table. Firstly, lead by example will further buff your bone dust brew to increase your primary stat by a small amount and you will share some of that primary stat with your allies around. And you will also get extra stats depending on the amount of allies you shared the buff with. The next one or two noticeable traits will be defensive ones. With Emony's magnificent skin, your fleshcraft can also increase your health by a small amount, leaving you with the trait before the last to choose whichever you prefer more according to the conduit you want speed or a little magic damage shield. Lastly, Postule Eruption will turn Fleshcraft into a DPS cooldown, providing you with stacking Postules that will damage enemies around you and heal allies whenever you get healed. For single target fights, usually you will want to swap to the Kyrians. Their Covenant ability Weapons of Order will bring you a lot of benefits. It will increase your mastery, your Rising Sun Kick will reduce the chi cost of your abilities by one, and your Blackout Kicks will reduce the cooldown of all affected abilities by an additional second. The signature ability Summon Steward will give you access, among 
other things to file of serenity the three hellstone wonders that will heal and clear all your poisons bleeds curses and diseases your best buddy from the kirins will be forged like prime mechanicos and with his three potency content path you will have access to some neat traits bronze call to action will be the first one and will summon the almighty brawn to knock your enemies away and assist you in battle with damage and or heals up next you'll get soul glow spectrometer a nice trait that provides you with a small priority damage increase Increase if played right. And finally, a fusive anima accelerator will add a small AoE damage to your weapons of order, reducing its cooldown depending on the amount of enemies hit. When choosing the right conduits, you will have to keep in mind that firstly you will need coordinate offensive. When using the potency conduit, you will have to order your storm, earth, and fire to hit the same target for extra damage. Next, in single target situations, you'll want Zuen's Bond. This will reduce the cooldown of Invoke Zuen whenever you activate your mastery and will also increase his damage. Next, for single target, you will want Inner Fury to further increase the damage of Fists of Fury. In AoE, things will change a little. You'll primarily want Calculated Strikes for more damage to Spinning Crane Kick. Your second choice will usually be the Covenant-specific Conduit Bone Marrow Hops for Necrolords, further increasing the shadow damage of Bone Dust Brew and reducing its cooldown when you deal shadow damage. And the last pick should be Coordinated Offensive, but if you cannot make good use of it, then swap to Zuen's Bond. For the Endurance Conduits, usually Harm Denial will be a must-have to increase the healing on your Expel Harm that you will most likely end up spamming. In case you need more, you can choose between any other options with Fortified Ingredients being a little more preferred when big predictable hits are about to happen. On your Finesse slots, again, you can choose whichever you prefer the most. Dizzying Tumble can be a good choice in dungeons to help the tank take less damage for a short period. And Tumbling Techniques can help you in fights with high mobility necessity. In your trinket slots, there will be a lot of options, especially because in Season 4 you can buy the trinkets you want from the raid with dinars. One such trinket from the last raid and on the on-use side of the story will be the first sigil, bringing you a big ass versatility buff with a long cooldown. Following the on-use trinkets, yes, all the good ones are from the last raid, you will need to get the cache of acquired treasures, usually with the axe buff to be used, and it will be amazing in both single target and AoE fights. Still on the on-use trinkets, the Chains of Domination will have an interesting interaction storing a lot of damage when you use it and then you have to run 20 yards to explode it. From the passive trinkets, the more noticeable and easy to farm one will be solely a secret technique. You already know this trinket from the past seasons and will require you to use it on an ally to get the highest stat rating, sharing some with that ally as well. From the Castle Nathria, a neat trinket will be Stone Legion's Heraldry. This trinket will increase in value when other party members will be using it as well. Finally, you can maintain the buff for as much as you can, never dropping below 50% HP. The Titanic Ocular Gland Trinket is back with extra high rating stats. If you're unsure, feel free to check bloodmallet.com as they have already updated the sims with the new trinkets that you can find in both dungeons and faded raids. As the best weapon to get with only one dinar this season will be Zovastrom, the Unmaking, from the Jailer in the final raid. But this time you don't have to kill him on Mythic to get it, you just use one dinar. It will have the highest high level you can find in a weapon and is a two-hander. As an alternative, until you get Zovastrom, you can use the reclaimed shock coil from the new old dungeon Mechagon <laughs> to zap your target for a little extra damage. Otherwise, just use any high high level weapon you can get from the weekly vault. At this point in time, you should have access to the double legendaries, but if you just came back or didn't do it until now, go get your unity from Zeroth Mortis, the campaign gets you the belt and the reputation unlocks the recipe to craft it wherever you want. This will let you use double legendaries and will give you the legendary power of the covenant you are currently in. Pair this with the Invoker's Delight and you will be godlike in every situation thanks to the extra burnt haste buff provided when summoning Zhu Wen. Oh, and build your Invoker on your cloak as this season you'll most likely want the head slot for the set or the high amount of stats it can give since legendaries will not be upgradable past 291 eye level. Tier sets are still in play but you should already know that by now cause it's been a while. The 2 set bonus Fist of Primordium will increase the damage of Fist of Fury by a lot, making you not want to interrupt it anymore. As for the 4 set Primordial Potential, this will increase the damage of your next 
3 offensive abilities by a decent amount, after you have used 10 other offensive abilities. This will be hard to track, so you will most likely need a weak aura for it. The rotation will be influenced by the tier set as you will usually want the 3 spells that you cast and are buffed to be Fist of Fury, Rising Sun Kick and Dragon Punch in single target or Spinning Crane Kick and AoE. The opener for single target as Kirin will start with pre-casting Expel Harm 15 seconds before the pull. Fist of the White Tiger next, Expel Harm when it comes off cooldown, Invoke Zuen the White Tiger after, cast Weapons of Order, Tormoth and Fire next, use Rising Sun Kick, Tiger's Palm next, channel Fists of Fury, expel Harm again, use Whirling Dragon Punch, continue with the normal priority. Your single target priority will have you use Zuen on cooldown, Touch of Death if target is under 15% HP, use Fist of the White Tiger if you're under 3 Chi, expel Harm if under 5 Chi, Tiger Palm if under 4 Chi, use Whirling Dragon Punch on cooldown, Rising Sun Kick after, Fists of Fury on cooldown, Fist of the White Tiger on cooldown, Expel Harm on cooldown, Blackout Kick on cooldown and Tiger's Palm as a filler. Your multi-target opener as Necro will have you pre-cast Expel Harm, get as many stacks as possible with Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick and Blackout Kick, release Zuen after, use Storm Earth and Fire and cast it again so all the spirits focus on the same target, use Bone Dust Brew, Spinning Crane Kick if you get a proc of Chi G, use Fist of Fury, Rising Sun Kick to enable Dragon Punch, cast Dragon Punch, continue spinning till the targets are dead. Easy! For your multi-target priority, use Invoke Zhu Wen the White Tiger on cooldown, Touch of Death if available, Expel Harm if you're under 5 Chi, Tiger Palm if you're under 4 Chi, Whirling Dragon Punch on cooldown, Spinning Crane Kick if you have the Dance of Chi G proc, Fist of Fury on cooldown and you don't interrupt it anymore with the tier set, Rising Sun Kick to enable Dragon Punch, Expel Harm on cooldown, Chi Burst on cooldown, Spinning Crane Kick, Tiger Spawn to generate Chi and Spinning Crane Kick stacks. This should give you everything you need to pick up your Windwalker and start spinning and punching and kicking and all of that stuff right now in dungeons and raids in the season 4 content and if you want to go deeper into the windwalker and uh, go to the next level advance and become the best then you definitely need to check the peak of serenity discord channel and the website where the top windwalkers have contributed to making some pretty deep and advanced information that we normally don't put into our guide one sad search Big Brain is Babylonius who has also helped us with the guide making sure that we don't say anything stupid. Thank you Babylonius for being a fucking champ, thank you for always feedbacking our guides and being the biggest brain windwalker um, I have had the pleasure to talk to. And you can catch Babylonius on the Peak of Serenity Discord, on the Peak of Serenity website, he also streams and has a YouTube channel as well. Thank you, and thank you everybody for watching the video, thank you Patreons for supporting the content once again, if you want to support us a little bit more, the reviewer, the Patreon link is down below and you can check it and you can uh, see if, if it's for you, and if not, that's perfectly fine, and if it is, we thank you very much, see you in the next video. I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wild Still, I play wild Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wild Still, I play wild It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wild